Ulster and Connacht, folks. Two-point game. 22 points to 20 with Ulster coming out on top. We're going to go through some key events and stats, and you guys can let us know your thoughts. As always, if you're in the U.S., URC is all on Flow Rugby, so check out the link in the description. they got the top 14 as well, the Champions Cup, all the rugby uh, down on Flow, so check that one out if you're in the U.S. Um, kind of a messy start to this game. I mean, this is one of those games which was maybe kind of saved by a bit of a grandstanding finish because the first half in particular, there wasn't that much going on. It was a messy scrum. It's both sides winning turnovers. Frank Murphy trying his best to hurry the game up. I feel like he's read those World Rugby directives for next year about speeding the games up, but he was facing kind of an uphill battle uh, at times. Um, Ulster, by 15 minutes, had some great attacking line-out position, but lost the line-out. Uh, Ethan McElroy had a great intercept on a Jack Carty pass, but couldn't burn him for gas. So Jack Carty, despite throwing the intercept pass, is the man who makes the tackle to stop McElroy's run which was uh, not, not often the guy who throws the pass is the one that makes the tackle, you know what I mean, for intercepts. Uh, Mac Hansen knocks on a kick that Dokes put through. Dokes playing 10, which is unusual. Um, yeah, what's up with the, the, the 10 stocks in, in Ulster at the moment? But uh, yeah, Hansen knocks that one on, gives Ulster a chance to attack, some phases, then Marcus Ray knocks it on. Like, there's not that much going on. But we do get to try this before half an hour. And there is some proper nice passing. Some pretty slick skills from the Ulster guys. When they finally hold the ball, nobody knocks it on. Uh, you do get a try. It's Rob Little who kind of finishes it off. But like I said, there's some great passing in the build-up. And there's even a conic hand trying to slap it back uh, amongst it. So it wasn't kind of like a purely um, great hands try. Because there was a bit of defensive... Uh, pressure put on it as well, but the Ulster guys still managed to finish it off. So misconversion, but five points to nil. We do have some points on the board, and Connick don't take long after that to get themselves on the board when they get a penalty. Uh, Jack Carty takes that one. So by half time, it's five three. Uh, it has been a slightly messy half, I would say. You know, it's um, the commentators are mentioning that it, it's, it's been a wee bit scrappy, mentioning the wind and whatnot, which in Galway it's kind of part of the course, but. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an eight-point game at halftime in terms of there's been eight-point score total, not an eight-point lead. Uh, second half, Bielham escapes a TMO check for foul play, which I think was fair because it's one of those head-on-head -head clashes, which was pretty innocuous. And, um, you know, he wasn't standing upright kind of thing. He was kind of bent. So uh, the referee dismisses the TMO's check-check, which is kind of pleasing to see Frank Murphy um, following his own opinion, which is, like I said, uh, sometimes pleasing. Because sometimes I feel like the refs get the call from the TMO and they kind of feel obliged to indulge them. But um, not in this case. And then uh, a couple minutes later, Stewart gets the first of his two tries. That maul of Ulster's was looking pretty bloody deadly. Henderson with a good take of the line out. And then the maul goes over. So 12 points to three looking pretty... Uh, pretty comfortable lead in what's been a low-scoring game. Uh, 51 minutes, Ulster got a five-metre scrum. McCloskey picks it up from the back of the scrum, but Jack Carty's able to bring him down. So Connick are able to exit. So that's a bit of pressure kind of escape, but not for long, because a couple of minutes later, it's another maul. It's Carter who takes the ball line-out time this time. He's come off the bench. And, um, yeah, uh, Stewart's able to get his second one. Carty is again there. Uh, making a tackle, but he's unable to bring down Stewart before the line. So 19 points to three, man. It's it's looking like it's going to be a long day at the office for the, the Connick guys. But that being said, they did manage to kind of, uh, you know, they did manage to turn things around after, you know, pretty much directly after that second Stewart try because they uh, they managed to get down Ulster's end. A uh, heap of pressure. And then their own mall went close before Caelan Blade. Goodness gracious me. How did he get through like three... Ulster tacklers to, to power through and get the ball over the line. So much needed try. Uh, 19 points to 8. And then the momentum, which was all with Ulster, starts just continuing, I guess. Uh, can it start? Can it continue to start? I don't know. It's, it's going Connick's way and it goes even more so. Like Just silly stuff like Sam Carter gets himself too close to a man catching the ball in the air. He doesn't really tackle him. He pulls out, pulls out of it, but it's still a penalty conceded, which is not what you need to be doing. You give yourself, um, you know, all kinds of pressure, and Connick got a, a line out in a great attacking position, but they did lose the line out, so that kind of momentum was was taken away. And then Ulster, with that flip of momentum going down Connick's end, looks like they're going to set up another more. 65 minutes, and Stewart's going for his hat trick, but just short 
I wrote that's a massive moment because the way the scoreboard was looking, uh, if it's another try, it's it's pretty much guaranteed to be game over because there's still time for for Connick, but. Yeah, they need to get moving. Um, also did opt for a penalty a few minutes later to at least get that 14-point lead. So they're probably not going to lose it. But 10 minutes, two tries needed for, for Connor. Can they do it? Well, they gave it a hell of a go. Uh, they put, again, a bunch of pressure on. Ulster conceding penalties. Greg Jones on the replacement. Uh, eventually gets yellow carded for just, it's a team thing, too many penalties conceded. Connor go through some phases. Prendergast goes over. But they find a bit of obstruction in the build-up. So uh, back for a conic penalty anyway. Um, they tap and go. And then uh, Butler's able to go over with two minutes left. So that makes it 22 points to 15. With the clock in the red, the conic guys pretty much need to go length of the field. And they bloody do it, man. Um, heaps of phases. Advantage. Cardi goes close. Eventually Adam Byrne uh, is able to go over. Big fend uh, to get himself over the line. It's it's not, I mean again with the wind it's hard, but it's not it's not the hardest kick. It's not a proper sideline kick, but it's a it's a it's a it's a kick, which is certainly not a simple one. And um, unfortunately for Connor, uh, Cardi's kick does go wide. I know that guy gets a bit of grief about his goal kicking at times. People say he would have had more Ireland caps if he'd been a better goal kicker, but um, yeah, sadly for him. The difference in this game is just two conversions to one. It's the same amount of tries, same amount of penalties. The difference is a conversion. So, yeah, I mean, it's a hell of a comeback from Connick, to be honest. They were looking pretty much dead and buried. And if, as I said, if Ulster scored that third more try, they would have certainly been been uh, getting nothing from this game. But they do come back into it to at least get a losing bonus point, uh, if nothing else. I mean, possession and territory go with Ulster. Run meters goes with Ulster. Defenders beaten though goes with Connick 19 to 14. So um, yeah, and penalties conceded 12 to 8 with uh, Ulster conceding a few more. So uh, put under the pump a wee bit by the old, uh, by the Connick guys at the end. Individuals Tom Farrell beats four defenders. Niall Murray makes 15 tackles. I still reckon that guy looks the business, eh? Uh, McElroy a clean break in 55 meters, but he would have liked to get away from the chasing tacklers a wee bit better. And uh, Marcus Ray 14 tackles from him. But yeah, man. Finishes a close one, like I said. Certainly, if you want to go back and watch this one, you could probably start it if you wanted to watch the whole game from, from the Rob Little try. You didn't miss a heck of a lot in the first kind of 25-odd minutes. Um, and then, yeah, grandstanding finish. If you wanted to watch um, kind of the final final 10-15, uh, it gets a bit helter-skelter, but there you go. Uh, you guys, let us know your thoughts. How do you reckon uh, these teams would like to go in the remainder of the URC season? And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Together.